you know, the attacks and the hard pressing and everything has been increasing more and more. But God is expressing himself more and more too. See, so many times we're trying to hear God's voice. And what he's trying to do is get us to understand and interpret his desire. Does everybody understand that? When you know the Lord, you know his desire. You're not always looking for the voice. Amen? So if you know his desire, you know his impression. And it has nothing to do with common sense. If you're trying to figure out common sense with God, you'll never figure him out. There is no common sense. Now, there's common sense physically, you know. That common sense of, you know, don't step in front of a car while it's driving 40 miles an hour coming down the street. That would be common sense. Unless you want to end your life. But there's an area of common sense spiritually. And the common sense spiritually is called discernment. And, and in that discernment, there is perception. Because you can't have discernment without perception of things. And that's why it's good, it's so important for the gifts of the Spirit. That's why tongues is so important. Because you're being filled with God's wisdom. You're being filled with God's presence. You're speaking a language that you don't have to figure out. Unless the Spirit gives the interpretation. And the gifts of the Spirit will follow. See, there are times when you're moving in the gifts of the Spirit and you don't even know it. You can have a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and you don't even know it. Sometimes you'll have, well, man, I got a revelation. Well, it, could, could, it came from the gift of the Spirit. <laughs> Hello? So many times people are looking for the things that are tangible, labeled, connected, instead of just cutting them loose. We are, we are in a, in a, in a, we live in a multi-dimensional, we have a multi-dimensional life. In our, our virtual realities, we've talked about realities. Did you ever tell somebody, get real? You know, why? Because they're acting like they're not real or they're off the wall. And I really believe that the Spirit of God is trying to bring us into an area of where true sight is at. You know, you've heard the saying, what you see is what you believe. But I'm telling you, what you hear when you see is vital. Because if you're not hearing, you're not seeing. Does everybody get it? If you can't hear, you can't see. So if you're just a listener and your mind is too busy, and you're still thinking about everything else, and all kinds of other stuff are going through, you cannot hear, you are only listening, and you can't catch the vision. Because the vision is caught in the Spirit. And it's caught by hearing. That's why the Bible says, faith comes by hearing. What does faith do? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? The Word of God that brings what? An image. It brings the true reality. Jesus spoke in parables for that same reason. Matthew chapter 15. That's why when the voice came to the prophets, what did he always say to them? The Lord would speak to them and say, what do you see? He didn't, again, so, what do you see came after what? I mean, the vision came after what you see. So when the Lord spoke, he said, what do you see? Then he would tell them to prophesy certain things. Does everybody get it? It wasn't to just duplicate his words. God was giving them a vision of a true reality. Things that were come. In Matthew 15 and verse 1, 
Let's speak it. Then the scribes and the Pharisees were from Jerusalem came to Jesus saying, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. And he answered and said to them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your what? Tradition. Now listen, tradition is a visual real, uh, uh, virtual reality. It was placed in me and you ever since we've been born. Does everybody get it? It becomes a virtual reality. Whether it's true or not. Does everybody understand that? It has to do with connection to this realm in this world of the temporary traditions of men. God has been trying to break that so long so that we're not bound by this virtual reality. Now virtual reality it's trying the closest copy you can get to true reality, but it's a copy. It isn't true. That's how new age is. You get some of these new age books, they talk about all great things that are even out of the Bible. But then there's other things in there that mess it up. So they'll have one truth and 14 lies. <laughs> you know? Let's go a little further. Verse 4. For the commandment saying, honor your father and your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to what? Death. Death. That's a curse. But you say, whoever says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is a gift to God. Then he need not honor his father or mother. Thus, you have made the commandment of God no effect by your traditions. So the commandment of God is, is a true reality, isn't it? But the traditions are what we call a virtual reality. Because it is a, it's not true. It's a fake. It's a temporary. He says, verse 7, hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy about you saying, listen, look at this. These people draw near to me with their what? With their mouth. And honor me with their what? Lips. But their heart is what? Far from me. Why? Because they're not living in reality. They're living in a virtual reality. And in vain they worship me. Wow. Teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. When he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear and what? Hear and what? Hear and understand. Not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. Then his disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard the saying? And he, said, and he answered and said to them, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Now a plant that's planted must first have a seed. Amen. So he talks about that seed. It's either from the enemy or from him. So he's saying every seed that's been planted by the enemy will be uprooted. Why? Because it produces a virtual reality. All right, let's go on. Verse 14. He said, let them alone. They are blind what? Leaders of the blind. And if the blind leaders, if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into the, a ditch. Then Peter answered and said to him, explain this parable to us. And Jesus said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth out, yeah, come from the heart and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unclean, unwashed hands does not defile a man. Again, the ma mouth of defilement is like false worshipers. Fulfilling their own will, not the will of the Father. They are blinded to the interpretation of the truth. They do desires 
of the heart that are rebellious and corrupt because they're living in a virtual reality instead of a true one. You know, if you hear the same thing over and over and over, it can become a reality to a person, but even though it's a virtual reality. Look at what's happening globally. Oh, they've got proof now big time. I mean, all the proof is phenomenal. And it's overwhelming. I don't know if you heard or not, but they're unmasking the air flights now. Praise God. Why? Because the masks don't do nothing. They're finding uh, snake venom in the now. And so people are actually dying from uh, poisonous venom, not from, the vi from that virus. They've proven that there is no virus. So all of these people that have been taken captive, lied to, taken vaccines, all by a what? Virtual reality. And what keeps people in that, what we want to call a false reality, because see, virtual reality is promoted by artificial intelligence also. And let me tell you, demonic forces are artificial intelligence. They don't carry the true intelligence. <laughs> Amen? So all of these things that we're seeing happening right now is there's that battle between realities. The lie and virtual reality and the true reality. Again, when people hear enough the same thing repetitively over and over and over, and they don't search out truth themselves, they will fall into a virtual reality. False reality. Why? Because it's very close. In other words, to them it is so true and so right that they would die for it. And they are. Left and right. Hallelujah. Go to Psalm 119. Verse 1. You know, think of the, um, think of the influence when drugs and alcohol and stuff. Look at that. Virtual reality. I mean, you, if you really think about it, medication is artificial intelligence. <laughs> Alcohol is artificial intelligence. Mind control. All of these things that bring a person into another reality is called virtual reality. It's so close to them. Man, when you and I were out getting high, we believed it. Heck, you get... Your house was surrounded by the police. You could believe it. He'd fit 14 people underneath the couch. I could hear the door shut at the airport. I mean, it was nuts. But that was a virtual reality induced by drugs. I mean, you used to see things. Even when I wasn't high. Those demons had control. Hallelujah. Psalm 119, verse 1. Let's speak it. Blessed are the what? Undefiled in the way. Who walk in the law of the Lord. That means they're walking in the true reality. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies. Who seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Ooh. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all of your commandments. I will praise you with an uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me. How can a young man cleanse his way? Taking heed according to his what? Is his word fake? No. Does it promote re true reality? Yes. Many people don't read the Word of God. That's why they're still falling into a virtual reality. They call themselves Christians, but they have nothing to back them up with. Blessed are the undefiled who walk and submit to his ways. Mark 4, verse 1. And again, Jesus began to what? Teach by the sea. And a great multitude was gathered to him, 
so that he got into the boat and sat in it on the sea. And the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. And he taught them many things by what? Parables. And said to them in his teachings, listen, behold, a soul went out to sow. And it happened as he sowed that some fell on by the wayside and, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth. And immediately it sprung out and because it had no depth of the earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell, some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased and produced some thirtyfold, sixty, and one hundredfold. And he said to them, He who what? Has ears what? Hears. Let him what? Hear. In other words, hearing brings what? Sight. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things come in parables. So that seeing they may not see and not perceive. See, so seeing brings perception also. Hearing they may hear and not what? Understand lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. And he said, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are ones sown on the stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or per persecution arises, for the word's sake immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thorns, and they are the ones who hear the word, and the cares of this world, and deceitful riches, and the desires for other things entering in choke the word, and it becomes what? unfruitful. So he warns us, even though you're hearing and seeing, these things will choke it and nullify it and block it off. But these are the ones on good ground, those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Parables are parallels. Everyone say parables are parallels. They are parallels to two realities that run side by side. One is temporary, one is eternal. These are, there is the virtual reality that we know that is not only present, but is temporary. Amen? And these realities, again, are stimulated by artificial intelligence, technology, which includes like people, video games, entertainment, music, Medical medications, they have mind control these days. Programming education, all of these things. The news media. It's invading the imagination of individuals and producing another sight within them. Again, uh, repetitive impulses to individuals and they accept it as a reality. If you repeat it enough times, it becomes a reality to them. But it's actually a virtual reality. You know, think about, again, our, our environment, our traditions, how we were brought up, all the separations in the areas of the national, uh, national person's nationality and things that have to read, people's languages. You know, that's why there's only one language in heaven. Because it's True reality. <laughs> and it's the only language the devil can't interpret. <laughs> All the rest of them are virtual. Because it has to do with what? Temporary. Go to First 
uh, Corinthians chapter 2, in verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, because as he's called the spirit of truth. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God. Why? Because the natural man lives in a virtual reality. Not a true one. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he, he himself is rightly judged by no one, no one. For who has known the mind, the thoughts of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So he's saying, I not seeing, ear not hearing. Nor heart accepts the true reality of truth. In this, in the true reality, there is honesty. There is integrity. Does everybody get this? When you're truly walking in the right reality, you're not lying. You're not exaggerating. You're not promoting yourself. Again, the things that can block the true reality are lying, false perceptions, things to that degree. This, these things are manipulated by something I want to call emotional defilements. Emotions will really mess you up if you allow them. Think of how many times when people get emotionally messed up. <laughs> I mean, there's a loss of someone there's okay to mourn, but then they, some people are still mourning after 10 years, 5 years, 2 years. They're still carrying around things that are associated with the dead. Because it's a virtual reality, not a true one. We're to be cut loose from these things. That's why it's so important to be cut loose from your past. Because most of us live the virtual reality in our past. False hope. Dreams that we could never reach. Never knowing what we were going to end up being or doing. Now you don't have to worry about it. There is no fear in it. See, the true reality says, I'm a child of the most high God. God has the last say. If he's with me, who can be against me? I don't have to worry about a thing. <laughs> and the I is out of the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Emotional defilement. Look at Daniel chapter 10 for a minute. Daniel 10.10. 10. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word, to me, I stood what? Trembling. <laughs> then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. The answer was released because when he said, the moment that you set your heart to understand, it means see. The moment you set your heart to see. Amen. And you humbled yourself. When he humbled himself, he said, I'm going to hear. 
So when he set his heart to understand, look at when you're asking somebody to, can you, can you give me the understanding of something? What you're actually asking is, show, grant me something where I can see. So when Daniel cried out, and he said, listen, he set his heart to understand, which is to see what God's plan was. And he humbled himself so that he would hear. Does everybody get it? The answer was released. I'm going to say it again. The answer was released because he asked to understand, which was to see, and humbled himself to hear. True reality was released to him. When you, when you hear, you will see, and when you listen, you won't see. Why? Because a person that listens is too busy. They don't see. So for me and you to hear <laughs> is to put it into vision. When you truly hear something, you put it into vision. When it goes into vision, it goes into heart. This is what separates true reality from virtual reality. Now again, things can mess people up when they fall into a place of anxiousness or fear. You can have a perception of something you want to do, but that's not what the person is saying. There's a difference. So you'll follow what you think instead of what you're to do, what the other person wants, because you're only listening, you ain't hearing. Amen? Romans 7. And that is a mindset people have to come out of and break. Verse 21. And Paul said, he said, listen, I find in a law that is evil pre is present with me. The one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, which is the new creation. But I see another law in my members or in my flesh, one against the law of my mind or my thoughts, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members or in my flesh. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind or the thoughts of I myself serve the, the, the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of what? Sin. So we see that there's a battle over reality every day for, uh, for me and you. So there's reality that's portrayed by the flesh or reality portrayed by the spirit. This false reality Again, which is uh, the area to where how we imagine things, people that lie, the media and so forth, all interpreted because it's artificial virtual reality. Um, uh, many times it results in the area, again, of fear or bondage. People like to, uh, when it begins to, when it begins to influence and overwhelm them, lies and deceptions, in this virtual reality, they have a tendency to want to go back to the old. And that's the ploy of the enemy, to want to go back to, when struggles and things, oh, I'll just go back to the old. That's why many people backslide and go back to drugs, alcohol, fornication, whatever it is. They even look for their old jobs. They're looking for a false comfort. Why? Because it was a virtual reality. It was a lie anyways from the beginning. It wasn't God's plan. It was their plan. Does everybody understand that? 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. We are in a continuous onslaught of being bombarded all the time. Do not love the world. Is the world under virtual reality? Yes, that's how it's controlled. Or the things in the world. 
If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why? Because it's a virtual reality. It's not a true one. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, or the lust of self, is not of the Father, but is of the what? Wow. So the world is controlled by virtual reality that produces love of self. Survival mode. Amen? Survival mode of fear. Again, many fall into this great deception of lust, <laughs> which, which is nothing but living lust, L-U-S-T, living another satanic torment. Verse 17, the world is passing away and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Colossians chapter 2. How many of y'all know the enemy can invade your dreams? Amen. He can create a, a virtual reality just through your dreams if you allow him to. That's why you need to break and cut uh, and curse all those corruptible seeds planted through dreams. That's why that bedtime prayer is important. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 4. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with what? Persuasive words. Well, words will create a picture, won't they? Amen. For though I am absent in this flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Your good order. Good order. Everyone say divine order. There's a divine order of life. When you are not living in the true reality, you are out of step with the divine order. Verse 6, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through what? Philosophy and empty deceit. Why? They produce a what? Virtual reality. According to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, where there's not love of the Father there, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Go to verse 18. Let no one cheat you of your reward. Taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, but he's what? Imagined. Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind or imagination, and not holding fast to the head of Christ, from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with using, according to the commandments and doctrines of men, virtual realities. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are no value against the indulgence of the flesh. So that means <laughs> it, it ain't working. Amen. Dece deceiving persuasive words against your order, your divine order, and your steadfastness. This is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to cheat you, steal from you. And he wants to put you into a virtual reality where you cannot see correctly. And many people who are led by emotion are into a virtual reality, not a true one. 
They live by how they feel. They make decisions by how they feel. Ephesians 4, 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their thoughts, having their understanding darkened. So that means they can't see. Being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling emotionally bound, having given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness and greediness. This is where money comes into place. <clears throat> they serve money now, even though they proclaim to serve God. But you have not so learned Christ or his ways. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? You put off concerning your former conduct. Listen, remember, your former conduct is associated with virtual reality. The old man who grows corrupt according to the deceitful what? Lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your thoughts or your mind, dear new man, that you put on the what? The new creation, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away what? Lying. I hate lying. I hate when somebody lies. That is the worst thing that somebody could do to you is lie to you. Lie right to your face. Therefore, put away lying. Let each of you speak with truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. There's nothing wrong with being angry. Just don't kill a person. Amen. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Why? Because if you give place to the devil, the true reality begins to diminish and the virtual reality begins to take over. Let him who stole steal no longer. Why? Because it's an open door to that. But rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him who is need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace or the plan of God to hearers. And please do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, grumbling, complaining, compromise, complacency be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God and Christ forgave you. They did not learn Christ, still lying, grumbling, complaining, rebellious, disobedient, self-centered, grieving the Holy Spirit with false justification, instability, prideful, self-protection, disrespectful, and ungrateful. Let me tell you, you fall in the place of ungratefulness, you just stepped in virtual reality. Just boom, just like that. 1 Corinthians 5. When See, one of the things the enemy wants to do is get you to look at what you don't have. If he can get, to get you to that place, he can move you. And that's where you must be grateful of what you do have. Because if you stay grateful what you do have and you use what God has given you, he will give you more. You don't have to go out and get more. He'll give you more. But the crushing continues. <laughs> Why? For new wine, new power. Yes. In the crushing. You know, <laughs> so you can discern better sometimes. <laughs> God says he chastens those he loves. He rebukes them too. <laughs> Sometimes he doesn't answer. Gets you wondering, uh-oh, what I did wrong. What is it? You know, when God doesn't answer you, it brings a self-examination instantly. At least it'll, you'd hope it would. <laughs> Again, we should be looking for conviction, not waiting for it. If people will look for conviction more, They'd be walking more in true reality than a virtual one. 
Why? Because looking for conviction is a self-examination. You're being common sensitive to the conviction of the Lord. And what he begins to do is get you more detailed, more specific, more discerning, more targeted. <clears throat> Verse 6, let's speak it. 1 Corinthians 5, 6. Your glorying is, yes, is what? Not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? <laughs> Therefore, purge out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, since you truly are unleavened. For indeed, Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexual immoral people. Yet I certainly did not mean with sexual immoral people of the world. He's talking about people in the body that are messed up and backslidden. For with the cov or with covetousness or extortioners or idolaters, since then you would need to go out of the world. But now I am writing to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral or covetous or an idolater or revival or, or drunkard or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. For what have I to do with judging those who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, God judges. Therefore, put away from yourselves the evil person. So this is where you and I must judge. That's why the word says, be careful. Bad company corrupts what? Good habits. See, living in a virtual reality, these individuals are controlled by that. They're controlled by demonic forces and emotional lusts. They become betrayers. They become taken captive in their minds. They're living in a false reality or virtual reality. They begin living for themselves instead of for the kingdom. In James chapter 3. You know, that's why the word says, many are called, but few are chosen. And the path is difficult. Why? Because it's crushing. No one said to be a Christian was going to be easy. Amen? Look at when the church started. Look at what the apostles had to go through. Some of them were cut in half, burned, hung upside down, crucified. They went through tremendous persecution. Burned alive, burned in oil, and they kept the faith. We haven't seen anything. We've been blessed. James 3, 13. Let's speak it. Who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have what? Bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is what? Earthly, sensual, demonic, and creating a virtual reality. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. <laughs> Virtual reality wisdom is demonic. Why? Because it's self-promoting. It puffs oneself up. God's wisdom should bring humbleness. Amen? We're not proud about the things that we know and understand. We give God the glory because everything comes from him. James chapter 1, and we'll close here. What does it say? James chapter 1, verse 21. 
Therefore, what? Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls and keep you in the true reality. Be doers of the word and not just hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. His natural face in a mirror. Because he's always looking, what? Naturally. Not spiritually. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of freedom or liberty can, and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. And if any, anyone among you thinks he's religious and doesn't bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and keep oneself unspotted from the world. Why? It will keep you in, in true reality. Again, that is the battle big time right now. People are falling left and right, living for themselves, falling into a false reality, what we call virtual reality, influenced by artificial intelligence, environments, traditions, lust, all of these things. Be careful. And nobody is 100% protected from it. Amen? That's what takes cooperation. That's what takes fellowship. That's what takes assembling. That's what takes being filled. Don't be influenced by emotional deception. We have a calling and a purpose and a destiny. Amen? We want to fulfill those things, but we got to stay focused on what God wants, not what we want. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are grateful. We thank you for reminding us of the great deception that is in the world and influenced by the virtual reality of artificial intelligence because the demonic forces are artificial because they're temporary. They may have a real influence, but they're still artificial. We are the true children of God. We are the genetic offspring, not the generic. But you're exposing all the generic, all the wannabes, but not willing to be. So, Lord, as you continue to shake and quake the body of Christ, let us understand that each one of us must work out our own salvation with fear and trembling to maintain the place of true reality. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God.